The percentage of genetically modified foods on the shelves of grocery stores and supermarkets has continued to increase over the years. More governments are accepting the production of GMO foods in their countries following the effects of climate change crisis that is being experienced globally. However, the adoption of GMO foods has elicited mixed reactions with the public. The conservative side is claiming that GMOs aren't as safe as the government makes them to be, while their counterparts have fully embraced them. But this shouldn't come as a surprise, as it is human nature to resist change and fear the unknown. Genetic modification of plants and animals has been practiced by humans for thousands of years. From the simple growing of plants that had favorable traits and neglecting those that didn't meet desired standards, to crossbreeding of less favorable plants of their superiors, genetic modification has since evolved. To get a sense of just how often gene modification was done today, almost every single plant and animal around us is vastly different from its pre-domesticated state. The modern-day genetic engineering is in every way superior to the traditional methods such as selective breeding where luck was a key factor to its success. Today, we can choose the traits we want, make foods grow bigger, immune to pests or even drought resistant. The possibilities are endless, maybe that's why people are skeptical of just how safe they are given that a lot of chemicals are involved to achieve favorable results. Are GMOs safe? To help us answer this question, we must first establish the difference between foods from GM crops to those of the non-GM crops. Is there any significant difference between the two, you may ask? Luckily for us, the human body cannot tell the difference between the two foods, why you ask? Simple, it's because they are all processed in a similar manner, but there are few differences that may make one reconsider. First is that GMO crops are designed to encourage higher rates of agricultural chemical use. The chemicals used in herbicides and pesticides to kill weeds and pests respectively are highly estrogenic. This may lead to increased risk of obesity, cancer, problems of reproduction, among other serious effects especially in children. Moreover, some researchers have reported higher levels of anti-nutrient compounds and lower level of nutrients in certain GMO crops than comparable conventional crops. Furthermore, since GMO crop cultivation requires higher levels of agricultural chemicals, continuous and excessive use of these chemicals cause pollution to the environment, leading us even deeper into the climate change crisis. Monocropping will also lead to a lack of biological diversity, which will not only lead to a reduction in natural habitats, but may also increase risks of crop failure. But one can argue that this has been the case of agriculture for years. The excessive use of pesticides has been practiced since the 1940s and it's still being widely used today. So, despite all these negatives, are GMO crops still a better option? Apart from the fact that GMOs are cheaper to produce since they are bred to grow efficiently, they also don't require much use of pesticides as they have already been altered to be less vulnerable to insects and other pests. For example, Bt corn is a GMO crop that has a gene added from Bacillus thuringiensis, a naturally occurring soil bacteria. This gene causes the corn to produce a protein that kills many pests and insects, helping to protect the corn from damage. So, instead of having to be sprayed with a complex pesticide, GMO crops can come with an innate pesticide. Are GMO crops bad or good for us, you may finally ask. GMO foods might just be the solution to a lot of current food problems we are facing globally. It could help developing countries tackle famine and malnutrition, while maybe even saving the climate change crisis. The labeling requirements by governments from all over the world in response to public pressure will also help clear the conscience of concerned consumers as they can choose on which food they want. Consumers should also take some time to learn how genetic engineering works and the benefits and effects it may have in the future. On the question of whether GMOs are safe or not, because of our current situation, GMOs might just be the solution to our problem, although more research should be done to ensure that they are safer, not only for us, but for the environment as well. If you like the content, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you.